Another Alien sequel has burst out of Hollywood's chest and is face-hugging the big screen, but should you check out Alien Covenant? I've got the answer right now. Hi, I'm Dan Merle, and I have your review of Alien Covenant. And I want to say right out of the gate, I will not be going into specific spoilers about the movie, but I am going to get into general overall details about the plot. So if you want to go into Alien Covenant completely fresh, just know that I'm giving this movie a mild recommendation based on a lot of mitigating factors, which we'll go into. So if you want to go in fresh, click away now, come back after you've seen the movie. If not, let's get into a pretty much spoiler-free review of this movie. Ridley Scott returns to the franchise that he made his name with, in 1979 with the original Alien with Alien Covenant. Now, uh, there's been a lot of questions about, is this an Alien movie? Is this a sequel to Prometheus? And the answer to both of those questions is yes. This is kind of Prometheus 2. This is also kind of an Alien movie. I think that's one of the big problems with this movie is that it's not exactly either one of those things. The one thing that it definitely is not, though, is the Xenomorph action movie that's being sold in the trailers. Now, I understand why Fox is taking that approach with Alien Covenant. Prometheus was a very divisive film amongst fans, and if you're going to sell the movie as Prometheus 2, that's a very difficult sell. So I see why they're putting the Xenomorph in all of the marketing materials for this movie. But I kind of feel like it might backfire on the studio, because a lot of people are going to go in expecting Ridley Scott to return to his roots of making an alien stalking spaceship movie and that is not what this movie is. However, there are some very effective action sequences involving the Xenomorph that's part of what puts me over the top on giving this movie a recommendation. When Ridley Scott does horror, when Ridley Scott does terror, when Ridley Scott does these things that we know he's so great at, he still does them well. He's still a master at all of that stuff. So it's understandable that Fox is leaning on the alien angle to market this movie. But there are certain things that are very misleading about the marketing of this movie. For example, that shot of the alien coming down the red hallway and jumping at the camera, that's not in this film. And it goes to show you why they're trying to get people into the theaters. So if you're going for a purely alien movie, that's not what you're getting. However, there were a lot of people that did enjoy Prometheus and wanted to see a film that picked up on the plot threads of that film. And that is what you get a lot of in Alien Covenant. We open the film 10 years after Prometheus with the crew of the ship Covenant, which is a colonization ship traveling to a new planet. Now, when they're awakened before they reach their destination, they find a mysterious new planet that could support life that they decide to investigate. Now, what they find on that planet and who they find and how they find it is part of what the movie likes to dole out as the movie goes along. So I'm not going to tell you exactly what, but Dana McBride, Catherine Waterston, Billy Crudup, and other actors compose that new crew. And I like liked this crew. I thought that the acting in this movie was good. I liked the characterizations. They didn't just come off as ripoffs. Even though, again, the marketing kind of positioned Katherine Watterson's character as new Ripley, she's not. She has a lot more nuance. There are things that happened to her in this film that did not happen to Ripley in other films. I think she's given a lot more dimension than people might expect from this film. Also on board is the synthetic life form Walter, played by Michael Fassbender, who, if you remember from Prometheus, played the somewhat sinister synthetic life form David. Now, it's no surprise that Michael Fassbender is a fantastic actor, and he is fantastic in this movie. There are a lot of different sides of Michael Fassbender that you get to see in this movie, and he plays each one of those sides really, really well. If you didn't have an actor as good as Michael Fassbender in that role in this movie, I don't think it would have worked as well, because there are a lot of things that he has to sell, a lot of different portrayals of his character that he has to sell, and he does those so effectively that you do get on board with some of it. However, a lot of what he has to do has to deal with the overall arc and the overall mythology of the series, and it does get bogged down a lot. This is the thing that's going to be interesting to track, is what fans this movie exactly was made to please. I think that if you're a fan of Prometheus, this movie might not explain enough as it goes into more details about the origins of the Xenomorphs, the origins of man and humanity. Those are very deep questions that were raised in the first film. This movie doesn't answer a lot of those questions, though it does delve deeper into that. If you're a fan of the original Alien franchise, I don't know if there's enough Xenomorph action or if there's enough of that alien body terror stuff that made that series so great for you to fully love this film. And if you're kind of a lukewarm fan of both of those, then maybe you'll enjoy this film. I don't know. It has a little bit for everybody, but I think that 
is what this film's greatest shortcoming is. It feels like Ridley Scott is really invested in making more mythology films to explain where the aliens come from, to pull on this thread of where humankind came from, and that the studio knows that they need to market this as an alien film. So it feels like Ridley Scott is splitting his time between telling the mythological story that he wants to tell and the alien stories that the audience is expecting. I'm not saying either one of those is the right way to go, but I do think it would be a smart idea to pick which way you want to go. This movie I liked more than Prometheus. I think it I think it balances both things better than Prometheus did. Prometheus to me was a mess that didn't quite know what it wanted to say or how it wanted to say it. This is more of a streamlined movie. I thought there were only two different movies in this one instead of three or four or five. That's why it kind of edged out for me to give this movie a recommendation but I still think it's very schizophrenic and these two things the alien horror movie and the Prometheus bigger meaning of life movie don't exactly meld well together the sequences that feature the xenomorph are kind of disconnected from the other parts of the movie that ask the bigger questions and I'm not sure that they really mesh together into one cohesive whole I think there are a lot of factors that are going to determine how much you like this movie. One of them is how much you like Prometheus. If you really like Prometheus, I think you're going to like this movie a little bit more. If you weren't a fan of Prometheus, I think there's going to be more things in this movie that you are not so much of a fan of. For me, it came down to how much do I really want to know about the origin of the Xenomorph? How much do I really want that creature demystified? That's not something that really appeals to me. That's not a question that I ever asked or really particularly ever wanted answered where they came from, what are their origins, how do they work. That's just not something that I ever really wanted to know. And these are things that the movie goes into. However, this is still a Ridley Scott film and Ridley Scott is still a masterful filmmaker. And there are sequences in this movie, both of alien action and where you go into the deeper themes that work really well in connection, particularly with Michael Fassbender's strong performance and with Katherine Waterston, Danny McBride, Billy Crudup, and the crew that they bring into this movie. So I am recommending Alien Covenant. I don't think it's a film for everybody. I think there are gonna be a lot of people that really don't like this film but I think there are going to be some that really dig the questions that it's asking it really just depends which Ridley Scott do you want and which side of the alien franchise are you looking for so alien covenant is a recommendation for me but beware it might not be what you're expecting thanks for watching my review of alien covenant click here for more screen junkies news and don't forget to subscribe